Okay, my wonderful friends, this is getting more and more exciting by the moment. Fifty years ago, literally, I was looking into Gibbs Free Energy, and I can prove that right there because that's the papers that I was, this just as a real little blip about it. But if you change the Gibbs Free Energy, you, you still have to have the same pressure, the same temperature, and, and an enclosure, and nothing in it can change its nothing changes but you extract energy from it it's it's almost unbelievable and i always thought it was however with this venturi we can make a completely reversible process in a self-contained system so we can have this free oh here it is here's exactly what you have to do thermodynamics that means temperature and all of the rest that goes along with temperature Gibbs free energy is a thermodynamic potential, as potential as power, that can be used to calculate the maximum reversible work. So it goes one way and goes the other way. That may be performed by this system at a constant temperature. This is key, constant temperature and pressure. So we're not crushing it to make a heat up. We're not pressurizing it. We're not adding heat to it. We're just using it in a certain way that we can get free energy. Now listen, Gibbs free energy is exactly what I have. See right down here. That was 50 years ago. It's the exact same thing. Gibbs free energy measured in joules is the maximum amount of non-expansion work that can be extracted from this system. It's a closed system. Nothing gets out, nothing goes in. Whatever you get out of it is power. One, it can exchange heat and work with its surroundings, but not matter. So we can do work with heat is nothing more than electricity. You run it your, your electric stove, and it's all this electricity. Now, uh, this maximum can be attained only in a completely reversible process. Now, I'm going to show you what our completely reversible process is and that is free energy and that I wanted to do 50 years ago and if I had somebody help, helped back then we'd be all driving for free now all right to get free energy that's the requirements you, you can't change the pressure you can't change the temperature you cannot destroy the matter all we're doing is taking light from a laser and it's it's actually disintegrating and recombining and that's where the energy shows up so this is our Gibbs closed system you used to have a closed box now you've got your laser it's doing this thing here and we got a collector that's collecting right here which is extreme amounts of energy and feeding it into a battery or whatever you want and then you feed off your power out because you could, once you collect it there, you can do anything you want with it because all you got is electrons. Now, you could oscillate it through different ways and turn it into AC, DC, anything you wanted to do. You could put diodes and then Zener diodes and all kinds of things to regulate the voltages and have. You could do anything you want. Once you got the electrons, you're good to go. And so now, if you increased the electron concussions let's call it that because what's happening here we didn't do anything other than take the things apart and put them back together that's all we didn't add anything we didn't take anything away we broke them apart and we put them back together but in the meantime there was a ton of you know just explosiveness and we didn't have to do anything to do that this adventure did it so it's a hundred percent enclosed it's self-sufficient it cannot run away this is nuclear fission. This is fission of the, of, of the smallest particles, which is light. And we broke them apart. As I showed you before, I'm sure I showed you this about 4,000 times. But that's the particles broken into bits. The black part came away from the white. So we got the explosion. So that's, I think we could do free energy literally within a couple of weeks. I can't see any reason not to be able to do this.